True and Y gastric bypass is a surgical procedure usually performed through the laparoscopic route or robotically. In this video, we will find out about its long-term benefits and risks. This is a cartoon of the finished product after the surgeon has completed the operation. And this includes sectioning the stomach so that a very small pouch, no more than 30 milliliters, remains at the top. And the remaining stomach is no longer in use. And this pouch is then connected to a loop of the bowel as shown over here, which is reconnected with the other end of the bowel further downstream. In effect this produces an elementary or a food limb as well as a biliopancreatic limb that brings in the enzymes and no digestion takes place in either of these limbs which is now limited to a much shorter area of the small bowel or the common channel. Hence the benefits are both from restriction because of the volume of the stomach as well as due to malabsorption because there is less of the small bowel available to digest the food. The gastric bypass is highly effective in weight loss. The maximum weight loss of occurring within the first year, which is up to 80 to 90% of excess weight loss, which is calculated upon how much weight the person needs to lose. 80 to 90% is lost within the first year, and then there's a very gradual increase in weight over the succeeding few years. This, of course, is dependent upon the motivation of the patient, their diet and exercise, eating habits and general health. Gastric bypass is particularly associated with excellent relapse rates of type 2 diabetes over the long term. 80 to 90 percent of the patients, the diabetes is complete, goes completely to complete remission. Over the succeeding years, this rate starts to fall as the patients some of the weight back on. However, it is very impressive that even at 10 years, over half the patients would still not need any treatment for their type 2 diabetes. And those who do, it is not as severe as their counterparts who have not had this procedure. Let us now review some of the long-term risks associated with the gastric bypass. Stomal stenosis. This refers to narrowing of the exit point from the stomach into the small bowel, thus resulting in recurrent vomiting and requiring treatment. An enlarged pouch may result in weight gain increasingly. Also, the opening is too big that too may contribute to weight gain. Dumping is a symptom that may occur early in up to 50% of the patients but may reduce over time. This involves food reaching the small bowel, especially sugary food with high carbohydrate content leading to flushing, sweating, abdominal cramps and diarrhea. Ulcers may develop within the stomach next to where the joint has been made giving rise to pain and discomfort and rarely uh, these may perforate thus causing an acute surgical emergency. Equally these ulcers if they occur right next to the stomach that is no longer in continuity with that that has been separated may cause a fistula or an abnormal connection to form. In that, in that case some part of the food or more of the food may enter the stomach that is not supposed to happen and thus the patient may start gaining weight again. Metabolic derangements, these are rare, but physicians looking after patients with bypass operation are to be aware of it. That includes formation of kidney stones and a risk of kidney failure, bone health because of low calcium and low vitamin D, causing demineralization of the bones, and osteoporosis. Rarely, a complex metabolic condition may ensue, causing encephalopathy, which is a neurological condition. Some patients may develop low sugar hypoglycemia and that is seen as a rebound increase in insulin because it's a surgical procedure with complex rearrangement of the bowel hernia may form internally and if these lead to operation and removal of the bowel there may be too little bowel left to perform the function of the body called short bowel syndrome. Finally, if there is a segment of the small bowel at the top that is too long before the joint to the stomach, this may start collecting food residue, giving rise to vomiting up to a few hours after the uh, intake of meal, a condition called candy cane roux syndrome. Up to one in five patients may require another operation or reintervention, and the usual causes are an internal hernia because of, because of a new arrangement of the small bowel, ulcers may form or perforate, thus requiring an urgent operation, an abnormal connection may form between the stomach pouch and the rest of the stomach, and the patients may put weight back on, the initial pouch may get bigger and hence that might be a reason for weight gain. In around one in five patients, gallstones form in, in the long term. This can be prevented to a great extent if in the initial six months patients are given ursodeoxycholic acid that reduce the risk of gallstone formation. And once patients have had a reoperation, there is an increased risk of adhesions leading to further small bowel obstruction and the requirement for further surgery. It is crucial that those looking after these patients are aware of the high risk of nutritional issues following the procedure. And these include patients may develop specific food aversion and in general tend to avoid red meat and prefer the vegetarian uh, choices. Change in 
mild habit may happen for some patients, specifically more towards constipation. One of the most important parts in screening postoperatively and being aware of is vitamin and mineral deficiency following a Roux-en-Y gastric bypass because most of the minerals and vitamins are absorbed in the small bowel, which is no longer available or not available in enough volume uh, to be able to deal with the requirements of the family. Hence, it is really important that there is a preoperative screening and postoperative follow-up and management of specific deficiencies, providing the vitamin supplements to patients who've had Roux-en-Y gastric bypass. In particular, they, there can be deficiencies of vitamin A, D, E, and K, vitamins B1, B2, B6, folate, and vitamin C, biotin, pantothenate, copper, zinc, selenium, and iron. Patients are best advised to take supplements and clinicians looking after patients after a gastric bypass ought to be aware of symptoms of deficiency and of providing the appropriate advice to the patients. This completes this brief overview. If you have any comments, please do share.